Good afternoon and happy Wednesday to you. Welcome back to Bible Study with Hans and Dan. It's a good week to be starting back. Yep. There's a lot of yep. things going on. We've got Acoustic Cafe coming up again on Friday night. Friday night at 7 o'clock, and uh, I think this is our fourth one since we've gotten back. And uh, come on out. Good free music. And folks are really enjoying it, yeah. showing up yeah. for it. Yeah. Um, we have a children's ministry piece, a brand new one, oh, third so through fifth graders. Tonight, <laughs> right now, as you're watching this, Unite is happening in room 317. And uh, we're excited about getting that going. It's going to be yes. on the first and third Wednesday of each month. Um, so they'll meet from 6 to 7.30 upstairs and 3.17. Converge is, of course, downstairs. Uh, we're off to a pretty good start in this new school year. And, uh, you know, it's just it's, it's challenging because a lot of things going on with kids, a lot of things going on with uh, the pandemic. And, you know, you just try to keep working through it. So we're glad to have that. Um, and then PACT, our free tutoring program, actually started <laughs> last night, Tuesday night. Uh, it happens every Tuesday, Thursday, 5 to 7.00 and uh, bilingual and just really proud of what we're able to do with with PACT. You know, and if you don't really want to get involved with what's going on, come sit in the parking lot and just watch it a little while right. and see the faces and right. then you'll want to be a part Especially, of it. Especially, yeah, if you want to sit in our parking lot 4 to 6 30 oh any day during the week with uh, CDC coming and going mm -hmm. and people mm -hmm. starting to come in in the evenings. Mm -hmm. uh, on Monday and Wednesday nights, our building, uh, the, the, the usable part of our building is full. Right. We try not to use child development in that area because we got to get in and clean it. But the rest of the building is being used. All and those it, folks that wanted to see the building being used. It is being used. It's being used. <laughs> We're I busy. love it. Um, uh, Ben's this yeah. morning, uh, uh, Wednesday morning, the teacher staff treats. And yeah. some of the folks got to hear about that. The group that is getting those together for each of the schools. Yeah. So our church ministries team is doing that. And they, what a great outreach. Yeah, they did Ben's this morning. We're going to do Culpeper Middle School next month and then the two high schools after that. So they're focusing on the middle and high schools mm -hmm. because it seems like the elementary schools <laughs> always a got lot. a bunch of stuff going yeah. on. But uh, So I'm really thankful for our church ministries team. And then this weekend, we've got our senior food delivery. Yep. And I was uh, on the phone earlier in the week with the lady that's in charge of that at okay. social services and getting more folks yeah. added on to that list. And so thank you to all of those folks that are part of it. And if you yeah. still want to join in there. Right. We, we need folks. There's always a box to go. So, <laughs> All right, let's get started in Ephesians today. Ephesians chapter 2, we're going to start off with verse 19. It says, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him... The whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. In Colossians, Colossians 1 verse 18 says, And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy. So we continue to think about the foundation of the church. Right. And Jesus is giving information on that. Then we see Paul building right. on the information that Jesus has given and then we see... And we're still using our 1958 lesson, right. lesson angel. <laughs> and so we just keep building on what right. that really looks like. Uh, being a part of the family of God is a great privilege of the Jews and now the Gentiles. Right. And that was really the most radical thing after they said Jesus is Lord. Mm -hmm. The next mm -hmm. most radical thing the New Testament church said was everybody's included. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and being one was... Not the norm in right. their day at all. Right. Uh, the Gentiles used to be strangers, aliens, and people might live in the same country, but they were considered very different accordingly. Right. And we just finished a study at the Culpeper where it talked about how the folks operated according to the classes. And that was everybody's mindset. Mm -hmm. You were in a class, I was in a class, and that was where we stayed. And then this message says, no, there are right. no classes. We're all together and we're unified. And so this was 
a really difficult message for a number of folks, and it was really exciting for yeah. a number. And it still is a really difficult message. And if the church could ever mm. practice what mm -hmm. Paul is telling us mm -hmm. is Jesus' intention for the church, um, you know, how many people would pay attention oh my. Um, to our witness? And, and again, we don't want to practice it so that we can be successful. Right, no, as a no, church. We no. want to practice it because it's the essence of who Christ is. It's because of the relationship and because right. of the heart condition that we have with our Lord and Savior. And and so that case is it's fellow citizens with God. People are members of the household of God. So it's not just now there's no classes. It's right. We're all part of the same household right. now. We're right. part of the same family. It gives us a new identity. <laughs> yes. And and I think we're always struggling with that. Mm -hmm. Because if, if it's always going to be about Dan and Hans, th there's got to be a higher identity to call us together. Right. We're not going to figure it out on our own. Mm -hmm. And that's what Paul's giving. That's what he's giving, right. Jesus referred to himself as the chief cornerstone, the one set in the foundation to bind the builder together and so building together. And so we have that hierarchy is set. It's Jesus, right. and then it's everybody, everybody else. else. That's right. <laughs> Thank you for saying it that way. If you, that if that you is got a great a question one. On who's in charge? Right. It's Jesus. You don't have to ask anybody else. It's him. And it's and then there's not a hierarchy under that. No, that's what no. we believe as Baptists. Yes. And again, not, our, our Roman Catholic friends believe something different. Mm -hmm. We talked mm -hmm. about that on Monday. Mm -hmm. We believe it's Jesus, and then it's all no everybody. Way. That's right. And Jesus says, you know, everybody else is a servant. Right. The person in charge is going to be the servant. So if everybody's a servant, right. there is no hierarchy right. there. <laughs> right. Paul applied this uh, building metaphor to the community of believers, the church, indicating that it rests on the unique event of salvation of which Jesus Christ is the foundation. So everything that Paul puts into this picture, it all points to Jesus. He's the cornerstone. He's the one who is in charge. He's the head. It's all about Jesus, mm -hmm. whichever way you want to look at right. it. Right. And it made clear that it is in Christ that the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple, which works perfectly because it's all about what he did that makes right. the temple holy. So it all just filters down yeah. from this one Jesus is in charge to everybody else at right. that point. Right. Uh, it is a work in progress, though. We, yeah. we have not yet gotten there. <laughs> well, and uh, again, I'm, I've been reading a little bit of John Leland here with the help of Roger L. Clatterbuck. And, uh, you know, John Leland had such great vision for what the church yes. should be. Yes. But guess what? We didn't get there. Mm -hmm. he, he's been dead a long time. It's always a work in progress. We're not right. going to get it there. But we are to do our part right. to move it. There's no completion until Jesus right. returns. Uh, and the folks that had the vision to start Culpeper Baptist, right. it's still a work right. in progress. Yep. Uh, neither will reconciliation or the healing uh, bridging of communities be accomplished in a day. Right. We didn't just get here yesterday, right. and we're not just going to be perfect tomorrow. And so in our culture and in our church, who's willing to take the long view? Mm. Um, mm. because we're not patient enough. To right. Do that. I mean, you know, that's, that's what that means. Um, we got to take a long view of what the kingdom is actually accomplishing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that takes a level of maturity to be just blunt is not often seen in the American church. Right. So, right. and we're supposed to always be growing closer to the Lord, not right. farther away. Right. It's a continuous growth. And we sometimes forget that. We think it's just about knowledge that right. we're supposed to be That's going. right. That's right. Yeah, I just don't uh, know as much as I should. Right. That might be true, but what we're really wanting to know is are you being more formed by Christ, which is kind of what we've been trying to do with the Sermon on the Mount series. Mm -hmm. How are we being formed by Jesus? Right. Uh, the knowledge does matter. It does. But, but being formed by Jesus can't be secondary to knowledge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and the unity from Paul's perspective is not a matter of organization, but of the sharing of life, of duties and ideals of the church. Right. And <laughs> that gets messy. Yeah. And we really don't like messy. Right. And so we try to organize unity. <laughs> right. we, we just feel like if we get the right organization, uh, another book that I will pull out another time, um, 
you know, is the organizational manual of Baptist churches uh, oh, yeah. that was written in That's 1950s. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and we're still fighting against some we of that. Are. We uh, are. But we, we just get everybody right and everybody doing the right thing. We're going to have perfect unity. That's not how this works. Well, it never unity, works that unity way. Unity was really, we gather to eat at that right. big table, right. and, and that was unified, even though right. some of us didn't speak to one another at yeah. that table. We ate together. So we, we fuss in a little bit on this. So we, we get unity, and we say, well, we, we need to do new member classes, Dan. Yep. We need to <laughs> tell them what we believe when they walk in the door. That'll give us unity. That's right. Well, all that gives you is people who all think the same. Because before you even let them in, you say, here's who we are. Here's how we vote. Boom, 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 boom. If you don't fit, yeah. this is not Go, the spot There's for you. another church yes, for you. That's right. Um, <laughs> Governance. Yeah. Elders, yeah, lady. yeah, that's the great conversation. The, oh, you know, you know, we've gone to an elder-led model. Hey, if you want to go there, that's great, but but don't go there because you're afraid of of just doing congregational governance, right? Right. right. Just too messy, so that, we're just going to not do it that that's way. That's not just going to make everybody unified. Um, and then the, you know, my favorite one, and we are a denominational church, so we're going to be non-denominational. Mm -hmm. We're not get caught up in those bigger mm -hmm. conversations. Well, yeah. well, guess what? We just did. <laughs> we immediately um, pointed a finger right, at somebody right, else. That's yeah. right. Uh -huh. um, and Paul puts unity in the context of sharing life. So what are the models for that for us? And it's so rare, but what I would uh, say the models are short-term mission trips. Mm -hmm. I've mm -hmm. taken some people who don't like each other on mm -hmm. short-term mission trips, or if they knew anything about each other, they wouldn't have liked each other. Right. But right. when you're on a short-term <laughs> mission trip, and, man, you are focused on, on doing life together, you're eating together, you're sharing Scripture together, you're working together— Man, there's some beautiful unity that happens on short-term missions. you're trip. out of your comfort zone. You're together. out of your comfort zone. That's right. Yeah, that's that's right. an important thing. When, I, when we take the youth away for a week. Mm -hmm. um, man, for the most part, uh, I've done that for I remember, 30 to a four, three or four years. And with the exception of maybe one, they've all been great. Right. You know, uh, because you get those kids, you get them away from these things for that's a week. And, and it's great. But... Those shouldn't be the exceptions. We need to figure out how to do life together, which is right. going to be a major theme of what we're trying to do right. in this uh, New Testament understanding of the church and the replanting of the church. Well, and that's, that's family, that's community, that's a whole picture. Right. And, you know, again, not to harken back to the good old days, but in 1958, we were also, we weren't built, well, we were building some of these things, the Ridgecrest and the right. Eagle Iries, uh, the heydays of those places were more 60s, 70s, where, right. you know, you load up your church mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. go to Eagle Irie or Ridgecrest mm -hmm. and do Sunday School Week or Missions Week or whatever you were going to do. Um, and that created a unity that you cannot create in an hour, one Sunday a month. In your right? comfortable spot in right. your seat. In your building. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Right. With Christ as the foundation, Paul calls believers from the old way of thinking. Isn't that funny to say? Yeah, He's yeah. talking about an old way of thinking. That <laughs> old way of thinking and behaving and away from that which hindered full expression of cooperation. Right. What are we talking about, not just within our church today, but within our culture that needs to be seen? Right cooperation across right. the lines and we Still talk talking about it we talked a lot about this when we've done paul's letters the mission of the kingdom of god was so central to paul that everything was secondary to that right and so he could find a lot of room for cooperation because he could give up his secondary things right. for the mission of the kingdom of god and sometimes in our lives, we need to be able to say, I gave up some secondary things because the mission of the kingdom of God is more important than where I sit, where I am, all those kind of things. When he says, I've become all things yes. to all people so that I might reach, he says, you know, I, I gave those things yeah. up just to get the mission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the Colossians passage, uh, again, gives us some some imagery that we're familiar with, that, that Christ is the head of the church. Uh, that means supplying life to the church, exercising control mm -hmm. of the church, because that's what the head does. Um, the body is Christ's body. Sometimes we miss this, and we yes. think, well, we just gonna, we're going to make our own body, and everybody's going to find their little role, and somebody's going to be a toe, somebody's going to be a foot, somebody's going to be an arm, elbow. Um, but we're making our body, and it's, it's his, his body. We're fitting into his body. Right. And I think we need to remind ourselves of that from time to time. Um, and Christ is the beginning, mm -hmm. and, and, and he's, he's the first member of this new creation. It's his body. 
And so often we view the church as powerless and, right. and just immature. Um, and that's going back, the gates of, of, of hell will not prevail against it. Uh, Paul would have had every reason to believe the church was powerless because in the manner of the world they were in, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they would have been powerless. There but was Paul's, no religious freedom. Paul saw something else, um, and, and we've got to see the power, and we'll talk about this next week, uh, the power in Christ uh, that, that changes lives and changes, changes our culture. Um, but in that powerlessness, Paul believed that the gathering of believers mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. overwhelmed any, any of this powerlessness that was happening. Um, because when the gathering comes, Christ infuses himself in such a way uh, that, that lives in the world are changed. Um, and we begin to say Christ is Lord, not just over the church. That would be way too small. Yes. Christ is Lord. And that's what they said to a world that believed that Caesar was Lord and other things are Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's what he says to this world that believes other things All are Lord. Um, and so if Christ is not the foundation, if this isn't his body, then we're a good to go, do good organization, but that's all we are. That's we're it. a that's good it. do good organization. But when Christ is the foundation, when the confession of faith is who we are, mm -hmm then we are connected to the body of Christ, uh, not just locally in this time and place, but throughout uh, the world. And when he's in charge, it's not our program. Right, right. It's his program. That's right, that's right. Um, and, you know, when, when we talked about Ephesians, Paul often spoke of the saints. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even when they weren't acting like saints, <laughs> he referred to them as saints. Those set apart by God as those individual stones, kind of going back to our our conversation Monday, uh, our confession of Christ puts us in the stones of, of, of the building. Um, and, and, and we are part of that. And I think something we really need to be challenged by and something I'm trying to, to challenge myself, not in terms of church attendance, but we can't be the Christ followers we're called to be without the church. Right. And there's probably uh, loftier things I can say, but that is the challenge of our culture right now. And please don't hear me say I'm, I'm getting on people about church attendance. That's not what I'm doing. No, but no. we've got for far too long, yeah. we have acted like we can be marvelous Christ followers without the church. And in some, in some circles, it's like the church is a hindrance right. to us being Christ followers. And Paul and Jesus would not have knowledge of that. <laughs> no, if you find a right hand laying on the sidewalk out there, right. that is not a body. Right. That's a body right. part. So, so I really want to challenge us as we replant the church, mm -hmm. as we think about the foundations of the church, uh, how are we going to do this mm -hmm. if we're not part of the body of Christ? Right. So here are our closing questions. Uh, the first one is one you will hear throughout this series. How are we sharing life with each other? Because a lot of good things happen when these believers were together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Technology can help us. I'll, I'll, I'll be the first to say that. True. But how are we doing it? And then what's the priority of the church in our lives? Huh. And hey, if there's five things or 10 things or 30 things, mm -hmm let's just say it. What's the priority right. of church in our lives? Is it, is it, is it, is it the primary pro priority? Mm -hmm. And so spend some time thinking about that. Give us some feedback, put some answers in the comment section. Let us know what you're thinking. Let me pray with us before we close. God, again, we thank you for the church and for the fact that you are head, that you are the life of the church. Lord, forgive us when we have lived differently from that. And Lord, help us to, to step into all of what that means for our lives, for our families, for our congregation, that we might be the expression of the kingdom, not only in this place locally, but throughout the world as you've called us to. Lord, thank you for your presence. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. See you this weekend.